to our main topic. The good, it's funny, it's got a wonderful plot development, good performances from our stars. The bad, there was some minor pacing issues in the middle, and some unlikable characters. The basics, well, special correspondence, like we said from the title, is a Netflix original film that puts Ricky Gervais in the three major creative roles for a film, and he makes a smart success. Netflix exclusive films have been a true mixed bag for me. Several I watched were flat out terrible, some were alright, and one was great. So sitting down to a special correspondence and knowing only that it was a Netflix original film was not enough to get me to watch. But then I found out it starred Ricky Gervais and Eric Bana, and I figured it'd be hard to produce something bad with the two of them. Then I saw that Ricky Gervais had written and directed the film. And my thought was, how is this not a blockbuster comedy release? And I watched it and was left even more baffled. Special Correspondence is apparently a rewrite slash remake of a French film. And it is worth noting that I've not seen the French version. As a result, this review is based entirely on Special Correspondence as its own work. So at the beginning, Frank is a radio reporter sitting in a bar listening to a police scanner when he hears about a crime going down at the nearby York Hotel. Getting access to the crime scene, he gets enough details to go on the air with a puff piece. That makes his sound engineer, Ian Finch, happy, but dismays his co-worker, Claire, and pisses off his butt, boss, excuse me, Jeffrey Mallard. While at a radio event, Claire and Finch are given an assignment which leaves Finch's wife, Eleanor, in the same room with Frank. Eleanor sleeps with Frank and he leaves afterward. The next morning, Frank is given an assignment in Ecuador and he wants to take Finch who has just been left by his wife. The pair head off to the airport, but there they discover that Finch accidentally threw out their plane tickets and credentials instead of the note he was going to give his wife. The two retreat to a local restaurant where they brainstorm with the cafe's managers, Brigida and Domingo. Finch comes up with the idea that they can fake the report, so they set up in the room above the restaurant across from the radio station. Finch creates a soundscape to represent Ecuador, and they begin making up the story. The desert sand has brought the city to a standstill. The sky has changed color. The sun has all but disappeared. I think we need more information, because I'm pretty sure sand isn't a big problem in, in Ecuador. To that end, they create Emilia Santiago Alvarez as a man behind the coup in Ecuador. The State Department orders Mallard to get Finch and Bonneville to the U.S. Embassy in Quito as major media organizations run with the Alvarez story. When they fail to make it to the embassy, the story becomes how they have been captured. To play. Everyone's looking for us, which means we have to go to Ecuador for real. Why do we have to go to Ecuador? It's that or we go to jail. At the end of that, they make a ransom film and their hostage story becomes a giant news. Eleanor starts to exploit the story for herself and Claire is assigned to tell her story. To rectify the situation, the guys have to actually smuggle themselves into Ecuador to get to the embassy. Inadvertently, they learn the truth about the situation in Ecuador. Special Correspondence is a comedy where the premise involves an absurd concept with a built-in obvious potential catastrophe. The film moves away from the obvious pressures of will they get caught or not to Eleanor exploiting the situation. That keeps Special Correspondence moving forward. The t transition between the major plot elements developed rather organically. Ian Finch is characterized well at the outset as a man who has never accomplished anything. Finch dreams of doing something significant, but instead he plays video games and his life is uh, augmented by a collectibles collection he cherishes. Special Correspondence is the story of how he finds himself out of his element and over his head. He is, not, he is in a loveless marriage. Special Correspondence has him on the unfortunate emotional journey of getting over his broken marriage. Frank Bonneville is your stereotypical arrogant local celebrity with delusions of grandeur. Frank is recognized on the street and baths in the adoration of others. He is, however, not dumb and his ability to think quickly on his feet is quickly established. His observation skills make his affair seem pretty scummy but his ability to talk his way out of the ethical ramifications of knowingly sleeping with another man's wife is a masterful work of characterization. Special Correspondence takes a delightful twist when Eleanor Finch reveals her true colors. 
Eleanor exploits the situation, and when she does, she is a terrible person. Eleanor is willing to sacrifice her husband and Frank to protect the money she has gotten out of the grieving American people. She is a reprehensible character. Perhaps the greatest surprise of special correspondence is how funny America Ferreira is in it. What started as a bit role blossoms into one of the most overtly humorous roles she has had. Ricky Gervais finds the right balance between overt humor and satire in special correspondence. Special correspondence is like Wag the Dog with more overt humor and it is more focused than American Dreams. It does a good job of illustrating just how gullible the American people are and how corruptible the media can be. More than most movies I've seen lately, Special Correspondence knows when to end and the film returns to the characters for the climax in an effective way. As such, Special Correspondence does all it needs to do without getting mired in the long-term ramifications of the deception of the three main characters. The movie does what it sets out to do in a solidly entertaining way and is well worth watching. If you've watched this movie on Netflix, let it, leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Were you a fan of the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you indifferent? Let us know. And as always, if you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinemagold. Your support helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, and be able to pay them. And of course, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification to be notified of future videos that we post. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening, and we will see you next time.